Hey scholars, welcome back to math with Miss Ramirez. That's me. Okay, today for math, what you'll need is your whiteboard and marker and your counter. So make sure you have those handy and they are near near you. Um, go ahead and pause this video if you need to go look for them and then click play again when you're ready. All right, today's objective is that we're going to count on to subtract. Now we've talked about subtracting meaning that it can take away. So do it with me. Ready? Subtract is to take away. Good. You have a, a total and you take away from that total and you subtract to find a new number. Now, what does it mean to count on? So let's review. Okay. So when we have a problem like 3 plus 2 equals, I don't know, we usually know that we have add-ins. 3 and 2. These are the numbers that we're adding together. Repeat after me. Add-ins. Good job. So our add-ins, 3 and 2, are going to help us find our whole, our total. So what we can use is a number path. And we start with a number that we, an add-in, and we see here is 3. So we circle 3 and are not on our number path. And we know we have to add two more. So we jump, we count on. So we do, we start with three and then one, two. So now what is our answer? Five. Good job. So the counting on strategy help us, helps us find our total. So how can we count on to subtract? Hmm. Let's find out. Say we have a problem, five minus two equals, I don't know. We can do the same thing on our number path by starting with the number that we know here, our addend, we know that's two. We can start with two and then we count on until we make it to five. One, two, three jumps to make it to five. So that must mean that our answer is three. And now we can check our work by adding. So we, we know that we had two. We jumped, or we counted on three times. So two plus three, if you use your fingers, equals five. Good job, scholars. So now I want you to make sure that you take out your whiteboard and marker and your counter so you can practice with me. Go ahead and pause this video if you need to, and then click play again. All right, our first problem. Martha has eight buttons. Six are square, the rest are round. How many buttons are round? Okay, let's practice. Number one, Martha has eight buttons. Six are square, the rest are round. How many buttons are round? So as the mathematicians that we are, we know that she has six that are square. That's our important information. And we know that she has eight buttons in total. So here in our equations that they already gave us, we know that eight is our total. And here in our subtraction equation, eight is again our whole, our total of buttons that she has. So we're gonna look at the buttons that they show us here. And without even counting, Ms. Ramirez already knows that there are six square circles. So I wanna find out how many more do I need to get to eight to figure out how many are round. So I count on six, seven, eight. How many times did I count on? One, two. So that means that six plus two round buttons equals eight buttons altogether. Therefore, when we count on to subtract, we figured out that eight minus six equals two. So there are two round buttons. Alrighty, clear your boards. We're gonna try one more. Okay, number two, it says, six fish are in the weeds, three swim away. How many are still in the weeds? So what's our important information about it? Correct. We know that there are 
six fish in the weed, so that's our total. And three of those fish swam away. So now we need to know, find, figure out how many stayed in the weeds. Now, what we have here now is our number path. So what I want you to do is draw this number path on your whiteboard so you can follow along with me. Go ahead and pause this video and then click play again once you're ready. Okay, so what we can do first is that we're going to start with the number of fish that swam away. We know that three fish swam away. We also know that there were six fish in total. So when I count on, I'm going to figure out how many times I need to count on until I make it to six. So let's try. Ready? Start at three on your number path on your whiteboard. And then we're going to count on. Make sure that you do not skip any numbers, okay? So we're going to count on. One, two, three. We made it to six and we jumped. One, two, three times. So that must mean that three fish stayed in the weeds. So three plus three no, times that we counted on equals six. And therefore, for our subtraction equation, six minus three. We go this way, one, two, three, equals three. So there are three fish in the weeds. Ready, clear your boards and click play when you're ready. We're going to move on to one last problem. Okay. Our problem now says six flowers are in a vase, five flowers are short, the rest are tall. How many flowers are tall? Hmm. So I want you to try and figure this problem out by yourself. Click pause. And once you figure it out your answer, click play again so you can check your work with me. So do this by yourself. And then click, click play again once you're ready. To, um, check. Ms. Ramirez drew a number path that you may have also drawn on your whiteboard. You didn't have to do it this way. And Ms. Ramirez knows that five flowers are short and six are all together in the vase. So Ms. Ramirez is going to start with the number that I know of the five short flowers. And I'm going to see how many more I have to count on to get to six, which is our whole, our total. I start with five and I get to six, one. So one more to get to six. So that must mean that five plus one equals six. Therefore, if I have six flowers in my vase and I know that five are short, that must mean that one of them is tall. So one tall flower. Kiss your brains. Good job, scholars. Continue practicing this all week in your math books. And remember, there are many strategies to find your answer. So use the one that helps you. Good job, scholars.